Hi everybody. Welcome to my first video on how to make an Opalo type print. This process will apply to any photographic print that you'd like to make on glass, uh, as well as a couple of other materials. Uh, so, this video is specific to glass. So what we've got here are the materials we're going to need for the first step. We've got a measuring cup, got some laundry detergent. It has to be laundry detergent because dish soap and hand soap, shampoo, things like that, leave a waxy film on the glass. Laundry detergent does not. So we need to use that to clean the glass. We've got a um, fruit cleaner here, a vegetable cleaner, whatever it is, that we're going to use to clean the glass. Some unflavored gelatin, which we're going to put in the water, and then the glass we're going to be using. Now I'm going to be making Opalo types, which are six inches by six inches, and that's the size of this piece of glass right here. Uh, I also was able to get some smaller pieces that I will treat the same way and coat the same way. That was close. And um, I will use those as test strips for my images. It's important to have test strips as, an, as a to use for your Opalo types or for anything that you print photographically because it allows you to get the um, correct exposure information. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the gelatin in the water. We take 450 cc's of water and uh, 3 grams of gelatin. Now, 3 grams is approximately one envelope. Uh, well, there's multiple envelopes in here, just that one of them is broken and now is spraying gelatin everywhere. So that's about 3 grams, or near enough as makes no difference. Uh, I've actually tested this, believe it or not, I did a test run of a video. And I used one of these for 450 cc's water and it worked out just fine. Uh, then you let the, uh, you put, you use cold water and let you let it stand for 15 minutes. The gelatin will swell and then you heat it while stirring. So after 15 minutes of the gelatin sitting in the water, you stir it and you bring it up to between 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 45 to 55 degrees Celsius. While that's heating, or you stir it and then you let it sit for a minute, or you can do this beforehand, you need to clean each piece of glass. And so you'll take your laundry detergent. I have a moral and philosophical disagreement with using liquid laundry detergent, but if you don't, that's fine. Liquid or powder will work just fine. You'll put it in with some water to, to water it down, and then you'll scrub the surface of your glass. When you get the glass straight out of the package, water is going to bead on it. And give me a second, I'll reposition the camera and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so we're back here with some glass, and I'm gonna, I've got a very, very hot studio light here that is an, a stand-in until my overhead kitchen light gets fixed. I gotta make sure I don't shatter the glass with water. Okay, so should hopefully be able to see what's happening here is that I'm putting water on, and what's gonna happen is that it's beading up. You might be able to see those beads forming here. Okay, So that's what you don't want to have happen, or little drops that remain behind. So, the, so I'm going to put this glass down. I'm going to grab a small bowl, put some water in it and some laundry detergent. That's good. And now, now this part you need to be very careful about for the simple fact that this is glass. It will probably have sharp edges and your hands will be slippery with soap. So it's important to, uh, to hold this carefully and not to let it slide around because uh, I have cut myself on glass more than once and I did cut myself while preparing the, sample, the test runs of these that I did. And it's not pleasant when you cut yourself and there's soap in the mix. That really hurts. Okay. So you can see I'm going around, I'm basically treating this like a big tooth. I'm doing spirals and everything. So we're trying to get full coverage. You don't have to clean the back in the same way. I mean, if you're so inclined, go for it. Uh, I don't. 
just don't see a reason to. Although in this one I might because the back's got some stuff on it. I don't know what that is. At any rate, so now that it is cleaned, you should be able to see that the water is no longer beating on the glass. It's coming off in a sheet. That's what you want. So I'm going to clean the rest of this glass and uh, we're going to come back and do the next step. Okay everyone, I'm back. So having a little bit of lighting problem here. I'm sorry about that. This is the best I can get it. Uh, like I said, my overhead light in my kitchen, is, the ballast is shot on it. But I wanted to show you what's next. I heated up the gelatin to about 140 to 150 degrees, um, maybe a little bit too much, it's steaming a little bit. Um, can, there's some condensate co coming off of it. But I put it in there, I got a measuring cup. This is a 60 milliliter or one quarter cup measuring cup. And this is the size I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now sub this glass. It's been setting dry, to dry for about half an hour. There's a few last little drops on it. And let's see if I can continue my good luck of getting basically no burns in doing this. So I'm going to fill up this with liquid gelatin. Now it's, it's liquid. It's fairly, fairly thin. It's, it's not it's uh, it's not quite as, as runny as water, but it's it's uh, it's close. So I'm going to pour a little bit on here. Don't want it splashing all over the place. And now you can see I'm tilting this to oops to uh, to get a to get complete coverage. And by the time it's touching my hand back there, it's cooled off. The glass is pretty cool. And so I'm going to finish this off here. and recover the leftover. Now this is going fairly well. I'm not getting too many bubbles. I've got two little tiny bubbles trapped in the corner there, but that's okay. Those two little bubbles won't bother us. And I'm going to set that down there. I forgot. Ah, darn it. All that effort to try and conserve the stuff. Set the first one off camera. And just to show you that process again, try to get slightly better framing on it. These have been drying off to the side. What I did was I propped them up on their side, resting against something and then against each other stacking them, and then put paper towels at the bottom of the glass uh, panel so they were resting like this on, on paper towels where my pinky is. And that did a pretty good job of getting the water off of them. And you can see that there's no water marks on the glass. That's very important. You don't want to have watermarks on the glass because that means that there's minerals or residue left over that could impair the gelatin adhering to the glass. The gelatin is important because it's going to give you the type of, type of bond that you need between the emulsion and the glass. Without this, the emulsion won't adhere and it could simply flake off. So I'm going to pour a little bit of this on again. Now after you've done the gelatin subbing on your glass or whatever medium you're using, you will want to let it sit. Uh, I, man, that that's really hot. I should not have just splashed that on there like that. Uh, I let this sit for three days last time, uh, and splashing it got some air bubbles in there too. Um, anyway, I let this sit for three days last time uh, to completely cure and dry, and that that was pretty good. And when I got it out, it wasn't tacky. After, you know, I don't know if I did it wrong last time, but I don't think I did. But after 24 hours, it was still tacky uh, to the touch. So I let it sit for longer. So plan on letting this stuff sit for a little while before you get a chance to use it. There we go. I'm going to set that one off to the side now, too. And I'm just going to repeat this for all of these and set them off to the side. And sooner or later, I'll be done. And in the next video, we'll take a look at the next step, which is putting emulsion on these. So that does it for this video. I hope you stick around for the next video when it gets put up online in a few days. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, wherever the subscribe button is now, um, you can do that. And then you'll know when I have more videos that I, that I release. 
also give me a thumbs up and that lets me know my content was helpful and that I'm on the right track. And the last thing I wanted to say is thank you guys for watching.